This is a Squiz podcast. We're your shortcut to being informed. Squiz Kids! It's your daily news fix. Fun, free, fresh. Hello and welcome to Squiz Kids Today, your fresh take on what's happening in the world around you. I'm Bryce Corbett. It's Friday, September 9 in Squiz Kids Today. Queen Elizabeth dies aged 96. Switzerland seaweed coffee. Thomas the Tank Engine's new autistic friend and why beluga whales love Adele. That's what's making news kids style. The Lowdown. The world is in mourning today following the death overnight of Queen Elizabeth II. The Queen died peacefully at Balmoral Castle in Scotland overnight, surrounded by her family. Hello, she was 96 years old and had sat on the British throne for a remarkable 70 years. I'm Bryce Corbett. With the passing of the Queen, her eldest son, Prince Charles, ascends to the throne. Ascends is a fancy way of saying that he will become King. His new title will be King Charles III, meaning there have been three King Charles in Britain who have come before him. It also means his eldest son, Prince William, is now next in line to the throne. A vast majority of British people, and indeed Australians, have never known a time when Queen Elizabeth was not on the throne. So, over the next week or so, leading up to the Queen's funeral in London, you're going to hear lots and lots about her life, and see the kind of ceremony unfold that comes with the passing of a British monarch that most of us have never witnessed. You'll also hear lots and lots of people talk about the profound impact she's had on their lives. People who never met her, including possibly some in your own family, will be very upset by the Queen's death, as her long reign represented a constant in their lives that has now gone. The Queen's family, including the soon-to-be King Charles, have all issued statements talking about how sad they are, paying tribute to the Queen. And remember, there's a little group of kids in Britain right now who have lost their great-grandmother. And that, even if you're a prince or a princess, is very sad. Ah, spring. When the weather starts to warm, the flowers start to bloom, and the magpies start to swoop. Sticking an ice cream bucket on your head and running with undisguised terror past a known magpie swooping spot has become as Australian as going to the beach and chomping into a lamington. And for the next eight weeks or so, the skies up and down eastern Australia are going to be filled with magpies acting aggressively. Most commonly by swooping cyclists, swooping kids on scooters or people who walk too close to their nests. But humans are fighting back this season with the creation of a magpie map. A website where people are encouraged to record places they've been swooped by magpies so that others can avoid the area and the pesky bird in question. So why do magpies swoop? Well, they're basically protecting their nests and the chicks that are in them from predators. It's simply an instinct. So what are you supposed to do if you find yourself the subject of an unwanted aerial assault? Experts say the worst thing you can do is freak out and run, or wave your arms or throw things at them. It will only reinforce in the magpie's mind that you're a threat, and it could provoke a further attack. Experts also say attaching a bunch of zip ties to your bike or scooter helmet tends to put them off, and people walking past magpie nests are encouraged to wear wide-brimmed hats and sunglasses for protection. Meanwhile, I've stuck a link to the magpie map in today's episode notes, which you can zoom in on and see if there's a danger zone near you. Fingers crossed there's not a swooping maggie too close by. Spin the globe. Each day we give the world globe a spin and find a news story from wherever it stops. And today we've landed in Switzerland, where seaweed coffee is all the rage. Hang on a minute. What? Seaweed coffee? How can that be a thing? A supermarket chain in the European country has come up with a clever way of reducing the waste created by coffee capsules. It's created seaweed coffee balls, little spheres of coffee encased in seaweed, and hence totally biodegradable packaging. The plastic and aluminium coffee capsules popular around the world create tonnes of waste every year. 
It's hoped by wrapping coffee up in seaweed that landfill waste can be drastically reduced. Which will mean you can get your caffeine hit each day and feel good about the environment. Win-win. Pop Culture Corner. Toot toot. There's a new, really useful engine on the island of Sodor, with the news yesterday that Thomas the Tank Engine is about to get a new friend. Bruno the Brake Car is about to join the host of trains on the tracks of Sodor, the first train with autism on all of Sodor. Bruno has a lantern that changes colours to indicate his emotional state, and ear defenders that puff steam if he feels sensitive to loud noises. He also loves train timetables and knows where all the tracks lead on the island of Sodor. I've stuck a link in today's episode notes to a little video introducing Bruno. And Bruno's not the only new character to be introduced to a popular kids show. Pepper the Pig has a couple of new friends in her world too, with the news yesterday that in an upcoming episode, Pepper will meet her friend Penny the Polar Bear's two mummies. Penny draws a picture of her family in the upcoming episode and explains to Pepper that she lives with her mummy and her other mummy, and that one mummy is a doctor and the other cooks spaghetti. What a winning combination. Animal Kingdom Imagine that you were a wildlife videographer and needed to get footage of beluga whales. You'd put on a wetsuit, grab your waterproof camera, and then... Wait, what? Well, 29-year-old Bertie Gregory, a filmmaker for the world's most famous naturalist, Sir David Attenborough, has a pretty nifty trick. He sings Adele songs. That's right, Adele, the British pop star known for songs like Hello and Rolling in the Deep. Apparently, when Bertie sang underwater, the belugas came right over to his camera to investigate. Bertie has a new TV series out called Epic Adventures, and I've put a trailer in your episode notes, and he's got lots of other stories to tell. In Antarctica, he witnessed the largest ever aggregation of fin whales. An aggregation, by the way, is when hundreds of whales come together for a feeding frenzy. In South America, he got fish jumping out of the water and picking fruit off trees. In Europe, he spent 26 nights in a row waiting for a European wolf pack to hunt red deer. On the 27th night, they finally showed up and he got the footage he needed. If only wolves liked Adele, he could have gotten that footage a whole lot faster. Time for the quiz. This is the part of the podcast where you get to test how well you've been listening. Question number one. What has a supermarket chain in Switzerland used to make coffee capsules? Yeah, that's right, they've used seaweed. Question number two. What sort of Australian bird is in swooping season? Yeah, that's right, they're magpies. Question number three. What's the name of Thomas the Tank Engine's new autistic friend? Yeah, that's right, it's Bruno the Brake Car. Shout out. It's September 9. Birthday today for crooner Michael Bublé. Ten bucks says you own one of his Christmas albums. And also a birthday for Colonel Harland Sanders, the founder of Kentucky Fried Chicken, which you'd know as KFC. He's the bearded old bloke you see on the signs. It's also a Friday, and you know what that means. Lots of birthday shout-outs for today and the coming weekend, for which we're going to need the old birthday reggae tune. Hit it. And it's happy birthday to these Squiz Kids celebrating a birthday today. Sahara, Dicolini and Skylar from Springfield. Jamar from Yarrawonga. Madeline from Mermaid Waters, Dave from Kellyville, Joshua from the Gold Coast, Alexander from Brighton East, Sam from Launceston, and Ada, who's listening all the way over there in China. And belated birthday wishes go to Ellie from Kotara, Sammy from Surrey Hills, and Joy from Mernda. Not forgetting, of course, those squiz kids celebrating a birthday over this coming weekend. Tobias and Amy from Poetina. Ridhan from Springfield, 
Abby from Petersham, Donna from Catherine, Maximilian from Banksia, Addy from Williamstown, Simon from Minganu, James from Auburn Grove, Camilla from Brighton La Sands, April from Surrey Hills, Amal, who's listening all the way over there in Ireland, and to DJ, who listens to Squiz Kids all the way over there in Thailand. Don't forget, if you've got a birthday coming up and you want a shout-out, or if you're after a classroom shout-out, drop us a line at squizkids at thesquiz.com.au. Well, that's all we have time for. Thanks for listening to Squiz Kids today. We'll be back again on Monday. In the meantime, get out there and have a most excellent day. Over and out. <laughs> <laughs>